Welcome to another video and today we're going to take a look at travel drippers. So here we're starting with the Mir Origami which I bought on Kickstarter a while back. Uh, this is the stainless steel edition which unfortunately they don't make anymore but they have two new colors. So this one is fairly easy to put together. As you can see it's really three clicks. And it is actually the heaviest of the bunch at 155 grams. The next one is the Tetra Drip. It's pretty similar to the Mir Porigami because it's a three piece design and you have to assemble it. However, it's very, very light, which is nice. So, to put it together, you kind of have to bend it and you should be really careful because it's very thin and it's kind of sharp. So you put it together this way and the other piece in the back, same thing, you also bend it a little bit so it fits in the notches. Here we're very, very light at 38 grams. And here's a comparison between the porigami and the tetra drip. Our next contender is a little bit more bulky. It's from Japan, from Snow Peak, the CS113. This is a one piece design, which is great because you don't have to assemble anything. It just takes a little more space. So you just unfold it like this. And so here you can quickly see that it gets a little awkward if you don't have a cup or something with pretty wide walls because it doesn't really hold on top of anything. And the weight is 135 grams. I'm using those Kafek Abaca filters. They're not made of paper, they're made of manila hemp. All three are the same, same filter, same coffee, which is from Duck Rabbit Coffee. There is a bit of a folding technique here. So I'm making two more folds in order for it to fit pretty snugly into the dripper. As you can see, it's pretty good. Of course, a quick rinse, just to make sure we don't have too much paper taste. And this is what we're bringing today. This is 12 grams of Hippolito Castro Garcia from Oaxaca in Mexico. They've all been ground on the same grinder with no settings changes in between. So here we go. And I'm aiming for about 250 grams of water in three pours. The first one around 40 grams to bloom, followed by another pour 250 and then another pour to 250.
tastes pretty good. Very smooth, uh, good acidity, and I didn't notice much bypass during the extraction. Now let's do this again with the Tetra Drip. So this gets a little more interesting because technically you would have to fold your filter in three thirds because it's a triangle. Uh, so I'm kind of winging it a little bit here and we'll see how this goes. Quick rinse. Same coffee, 12 grams again. So I'm not a machine, but I'm trying my best to stick to the same pore profile, which is 40 gram bloom, 150 grams, and then 250 grams, like the previous one. So this one seems to have a little more bypass, um, but we're going to pour a little more water to check. So this is a very light brewer and as a result we see quite a bit of bypass. Yeah, that's bypass. The water definitely escapes to the size of the filter. And here's a close up. This one is maybe a little bit sweeter than the previous one. Not by much though. So here we have to be also creative with the filter folding technique in order for it to fit.
and we're back at it. 40 gram bloom, pour to 120 and to 250. And here I'm trying again for the same profile of 40 gram bloom, pour to 150 and then pour again to 250. This one seems to have a little bit of bypass too, but overall not too bad because the walls are really smooth so the paper tends to stick. I've been using the Porigami for quite some time in my travel kit, for which I have a video. As for the taste, this cup is definitely not as interesting as the other two. There's less acidity, less sweetness, it's kind of hollow. And here are the scores. So the graded 1 through 5, the winner is clearly the Tetra because it produced a really good cup while still being really light. The Snow Peak is a little bit easier to use, but it's also quite a bit heavier, so it's your choice basically. And now for the Porigami. So the reason why the coffee wasn't as good as the other two, I believe, is because it has a lot of thermal mass and the filter tends to stick. And that probably creates a lot of heat dissipation, which means you are brewing at a much lower temperature, which will make a difference. It's also really easy to fix by brewing at a higher temperature. So all in all, they're all pretty good. They are obviously at different price points, but I think if you care about weight, the Tetra is the best. Thank you for watching and see you next time.